Hi everyone, today I'm here to show you guys how to set up your brand new Earth Pulse V6 device. Don't worry if you have one of the older models, the setup of the device remains the same, so everybody can follow along. Your Earth Pulse device comes in a clear zipper travel case like this. I have already undone some of the wires, so it's easy for me to show you guys. So I have the V6 Pro device here with me. It's got two magnets. Let me show you each of the components so you become familiar with it. First we have the V6 Pro controller. Uh, our new controller features a standard rubberized enclosure, heat slits on each side, and our new logo, and a real nice chrome finish. Next we have the power supply. The power supply comes with a few different adapter tips. Let me show you. Um, these adapter tips will ensure that you can use your earth pulse no matter where you are and what sort of electrical system you use. So whether you have a 100 volt electrical system or a 240 volts electrical system, it doesn't matter. You will be ready to use the earth pulse no matter where you are. And also, as soon as we receive one of these power supplies to our shop, we work on each one of them to make them as low EMF as possible. Next we have the magnets. I've got two magnets here with me. Our magnets now have new UL approved cables. Now we'll power on your V6 device. So for that we will first attach an adapter tip to the power supply. You just have to slide it in like this, so it's quite simple. And now we will plug this into a wall socket. So we do not recommend using power strips because of the dirty electricities and we've tested most of them and they all tested out to be terrible. So just plug this straight into a wall socket. So I'm going to plug that in. Alright, so now let's plug in the power supply into the controller. Press the power button. You'll see that the screen lights up, the blue diode on the face of the controller is lit solid and the controller boots to mode 9.6 Hz. Now let me show you the different parts of the magnet so you become familiar with it. So let me deconstruct the magnet to show you all the different parts. So this is the cross polarity ring. What I'm unscrewing now is the center core of the magnet. So the core is what holds the magnet together and this core uh, focuses the field and strengthens the field that is produced by the air core. This is the air core. This is the black plastic doll shaped component. It's got N embossed on top of it. So this is the side of the magnet that you must use. So make sure that you always place the magnet with the end side facing up and towards your body. Even for local applications and such, you will be placing the end side of the magnets towards your, or in contact with your body. And this is the base plate. The base plate is what attaches to the bottom of the echo. The base plate is uh, a relatively weak uh, static south polarized component. Alright, so now let's plug the magnets into the controller. The magnets go into the magnet output ports. After you've plugged them in, let's press the select start button. It will take you to the timer screen. The time defaults to 8 hours. You can press the up and down arrow keys to set the time. So our time range is from 15 minutes all the way to 12 hours. So once you've set your preferred timing, press the select start button again. You will notice the asterisk symbol on the screen is blinking and also the blue diode on this controller starts blinking. So this is when you know that the controller is active. So if you don't push any buttons for about 30 seconds, the controller screen will go dark. So this is a new feature on the V6.
Now let's test the magnets for pulsing. We'll first begin by unscrewing the cross polarity ring. We'll hold it over the center core of the magnet. You'll notice the field pulsing. Notice the beating of the ring on the magnet. It beats in time with the blinking blue diode on the face of the controller. So this is how you know that the controller is active and your magnet is pulsing. So now you're ready to use the magnet. Okay, now let me show you guys the amplitude control. So amplitude is basically the field strength. Our default amplitude setting is 70%. So let's press the up and down arrow keys to wake the screen up. Our arrow keys are now made with glow-in-the-dark ink, so you can find them easily. When the screen is dark and in the night, it's easy for you to find them. Um, so we'll first begin by pressing the up and down arrow keys. It will be at a default amplitude setting of 70%. So you can adjust amplitude by pressing the up and down arrow keys to increase or decrease them. Once you adjust them, you don't have to press any other button. So let's go all the way up to 100%. I'll show you how relatively strong the field gets. This is 100% amplitude now. Notice the beating of the magnet is so much stronger now compared to 70%. Now I'll go down all the way to 10%. You'll notice how the field gets weaker as you keep going down. So this is a 10%. The field is relatively weaker. So you can try this out for yourself and see how relatively weak or strong the field gets. So your V6 device has brand new program modes now. We are so excited for you to use them. We've got 15 modes now on the V6 device. If you have the manual mode only basic device, then you have only the manual mode. So let me show you all our different program modes that we have now. First we have 9.6 Hz, the controller boots to 9.6 Hz. Then we have Schumann mode. This is set to 7.83 Hz. Then we have the Tesla 1 mode, which is set to 9.63 Hz. Then we've got the Tesla 2 mode, which is set to 3.69 Hz. Then we've got mode 14.4 Hz. So this is if you want to use a, rel a relatively higher frequency, then you may use this mode. Then we've got Sleep 1, Sleep 2, Sleep 3, Sleep 4 and Sleep easy modes. So these modes were there in our original Earth Pulse models from way back. So you know these are our standard sleep programs. So you may learn more about it in our user manual. Next we've got the manual mode. Let me show you the operation of manual mode. So on manual mode, press the select start button. It will take you to the timer screen and you can set the time according to your preference. After that, you can select the frequency. So our frequency range is now from 0.5 Hz all the way up to 14.4 Hz. And the manual mode on the V6 is now tunable to 100th of a Hz. So that means you will be able to select a frequency exactly nearly. So you can now select say 9.63 Hz. Once you select that and the controller is active, your device is now set to 9.63 Hz. Now in the manual mode on the V6, the frequency is now tunable to 100 over Hz. So that means you'll be able to select or set a particular frequency nearly exactly. After the manual mode, we have recover mode. So recover mode is centered at 9.6 Hz but it floats up to 10.1 hertz or floats down to 9.1 hertz half the time so only at half the time it's centered at 9.6 hertz next we have alert mode so alert mode cycles from 12 hertz to 14.4 hertz then we've got the entrain up and entrain down mode so the entrain down and entrain up modes goes all the way down or up and then down through our entire frequency range. So this way you'll have lots of different ideas to play with 
I hope you have a small gist of all our different programs. So at the end of each of our programs, we have a one hour wake up buffer. So each mode has a wake up phase that kicks in at about 20 minutes before the end of an eight hour setting. So if you uh, have sleep three mode on, uh, and you set it for 8 hours, the wake up phase will kick in at about 20 minutes before the end of set timer. And if this does not wake you up, then the wake up buffer will kick in at the end of set timer. The wake up buffer runs for 1 hour. Wake up buffer is on all of our modes, so no matter how long you set the timer for, the wake up buffer will run for 1 hour. So all our program modes are algorithmic. That means that if you set uh, the timer for say one hour, then the wake up phase will kick in at about say a couple of minutes before the end of set timer. But the wake up buffer is not algorithmic, so that means that no matter how long you set the timer for, the wake up buffer will run for one hour towards the end of set timer. So for a single magnet device, you'll use just the air core under, under the base of your skull. But if you have a double magnet system like me, you will use the air core under the base of your skull. And the second magnet you will use in sleep configuration and you will place this under the mattress, under your hips or under your knees. And you'll be ready to begin your initial session. Set the controller to recover mode and let the amplitude be at 70%. And set the timer for about 1 to 3 hours. This is your choice. And you may fall asleep at this time, um, or you may not fall asleep, but I assure you that the time will pass by quickly and you'll enjoy it. Based on your initial session, you'll decide what sleep program to use for your regular nighttime use. So think of your initial session as a test as well as your initial use. So for your regular nighttime use, you'll be using both the magnets in sleep configuration and you'll be placing them under the mag mattress. One magnet under your upper torso and the other magnet under your hips. So I hope you guys will enjoy your initial session. And if you have any problems or concerns, please feel free to write to us at customer support at sleeptech.com. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys will enjoy the earth as much as we do. Thank you.